Hey guys, Lemon02. Uh, started rolling, unfortunately, a little bit late. Um, we are two games into this match. We're playing against Red Deck Wins. Um, and we're 1-1 we're right now. Um, this hand's keepable, I think. It's not great, but it's okay. So next turn, we're going to take... He's probably going to cast down his Kiln Fiend. Would be my guess. Nice. All right, so we're going to take one here. We're going to take two more from our own lands, unfortunately. Um, a lot of damage from our lands here, but... This should be good. Can morph the a blistering fire cat. I'm actually a okay with that because I'll probably cast the goy fount. Okay, slith fire walker. Fine by me. Just cast this thing out. Goyf is a pretty good blocker. I'm going to go Blistering Fire Cat. Yep. So we're going to take seven this turn. Or not. I'm going to block here. Take three. Well, hopefully you drew something. Well, hopefully you didn't draw something really good that beats us, like Price of Progress. Hopefully we can duress that out of your hand. Um, obviously, if he passes the turn back, then um, we just get him here. <clears throat> well, Demises. I will actually play the Wasteland down um, because it actually does salvage some damage um, against uh, against Price. I don't have the Dromokus command on me to prevent the damage from it. Um, Blood Moon would obviously still not be great for us. Um, well, I don't think this is what you wanted. I think you wanted to attack there and just throw it away. Um, because now I'm going to get even more life out of this thing. I don't think, well, here's what we do. We're going to duress him, see what he's working with. Leave the Wasteland up. It's a techier play, but I don't want to get caught out with um, too many non-basics. I don't really want to cast them our chest here because haste creatures are a thing, and I kind of want to start wailing on them. You can burn my face. This is fine. Okay, game is ended. Wonder what he had. Good games, man. Um, Okie doke. So we'll report our uh, two one here. Um, this.
here. He must have just drawn land. Verify match report. Um, and, and frankly, all we were using it for there is to um, is to get more. Uh, let's see what these two are on. Is to get more um, more flips off the Huntmaster. So even if we had nothing, I mean, it wasn't going to hit anything because if he had an instant, he would have cast it there. All right. So what are what is Michelle on today? I think Garland's very likely to be on some sort of Grixis thing. All right, yeah, she's on Blue Moon. I kind of figured she would be. So she's on like a Back to Basics deck. Um, Contamination seems pretty good with Tenacious dead, though. Well, he's got a lot of time. Um, block with Murderous... Well, I guess block with either, really. So she's going to be on Near Infinite Life, but she can't cast anything. So he's going to die to his own Bitter Blossom. Um, this deck seems interesting. So he's not on what I would have expected him to be on. Okie doke, so this thing comes back. Um, is he on some sort of combo deck with Murderous Red Cap? It already has the minus one, minus one counter, though. Um, might as, I mean, I guess you could start attacking here, but what's the point? Like, you gotta get rid of the Worm Coil first, and then generate some sort of means of overwhelming advantage. Oh, Recurring Nightmares in the Graveyard? Uh, force of will, okay, that's, that's what happened here. Um, Dark Petition got... What did we get? Hard telling. Recurring Nightmare would have been probably quite impossible for her to beat. Um, but if she just gets a Reclamation Sage here... Alright, to <laughs> Woo! The Haymakers are real. Can't counter it. Um, Eternal Witness, but not enough mana. Eternal Witness for the Reclamation Sage. I'm sorry, the uh, Recurring Nightmare would have been a beating. I mean, just getting, just blocking and having in hand, block, recurse, cast Living Death. Living Death kills one of the tokens. It's a Shriek Maw back, which does what? Nothing much good. Um, I don't know, maybe that's not good enough. I'm trying to think here. Well, it does also allow him to get rid of the Bitter Blossom, which is eventually going to kill him. Um, Oh. What did he get? I mean, I guess he could just sack the... Um... Alright, murderous cuts. Okay, so he is going for... He left the Reclamation Sage in... Okay, all right, I get this now. So this is going to be a living death turn. Okie doke. No, I would have figured Living Death would have made most sense. I guess he got Murderous Cut or Boris Stronghold to start getting back the um, Reclamation Sage. Okay, Sweltering Suns. I mean, I, I assume she probably has Batter Skull in her deck. Alright, so... I'm going to double block something. Tenacious dead. 
so janky, but it's going to do work here. Why would you triple block here? Or double, okay, well, you're just going to do this, I guess. This is fine. Okay, if it's tapped for mana. Okay. Doesn't make them swamps. It just makes them produce black mana. Um, did not recurse the... Did not recurse the Reclamation Sage, interestingly enough. I think he wanted to there. This is a bizarre game. Um, could even go to time. Let's just see really quick what these two are on. Golden Lynn's probably on White Weenie, I think. And it's hard telling what um what little field will be on. I think probably Grixis. Possibly White Weenie too. I don't know. Just gonna look real quick. I want to see this other game. It looks interesting. Um all right, red deck went Gobbos. Goblins. Cool. Well, Goblins is a pretty powerful deck. But Fathom it can have a tough time against um against white based decks. Honor the Pier. You need more critters, though. You're at 18, though. Not bad. Circle of Protection Red. Not as good against Gobbos, though. You just hang back here. Um, can throw his Gobbos at you. If he has, like, a Lord, it could be a good game. Actually, this game's more interesting than I thought. I really don't want to face Goblins. I don't mind Red Deck wins, but Gobbos is more annoying. I guess I do have a decent board against it, though. Um, all right. Gains of Life. Oof, the roof is on fire. <laughs> and what we need is some more Garrick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> the old Garrick. <laughs> Michelle, you probably go to game three, unless this is your last game. Um, this has been a very interesting game. So he lets the contamination go. Interestingly enough, I think I would have kept it here. Yeah, just bolt. Um, hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. <clears throat> well, what does the red deck wins oh, red deck wins player have? Circle of protection red is fine. I, I, I think it's not really where you want to be in, in the white weenie aggro matchup though, I don't think. Um you need to have more threats. Um, I tend to like the protection from red, all critters protection from red enchantment, um, blood knight, or I'm sorry, uh, the white version of blood knight. Well, you block the land, I think. Okay, well, it gets that thing. I don't think it exiled anything. It does not appear it did. So it gets six damage in. That is a two for one, though. Then three cards. They're both on three cards. The board is more developed, but Circle of Prot Red seems decent. All right, Bolt to face. Makes sense to loose it now. Although, I don't know about that. Like, He's trying to race him, like, if he just has, like, a random, like, I don't know, good creature card. All right, this thing. More things? No. Yep. He essentially can do one damage this turn. No, oh, Goblin Bush a Whacker. This still doesn't really do all that much, though, because you block the Mishra's Factory and stop the damage from, like, most of them. You block Factory, though, for sure. Block Factory, let the Deathblade die, and then, um... Yep. Block Factory for sure, because it's the thing that you cannot prevent the damage from. And then, prevent 6 damage, take 4, down to 5.
see, like on these horizontal growth style strategies, though, I'm not as big a fan. Oh, Michelle Huang wins. She briberied him for probably something ridiculous. Why the contamination ever left play, though, um, is beyond me. Um, that doesn't make sense to me. Okay, so is it two cards? Five life, not a lot. Um, his best draw is probably like drop land kitchen things. Need to be playing threats here, though. Oh, this game's still going, actually. Just passing it. I don't know about that. I mean, yeah, Mog Raider. That's good against Circle of Protection. It's not going to do much here, though. Next turn it will, though. Even the mind sensor. Hmm, okay. I mean, no, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. This is a really bad play. You don't... Oh, my goodness, guys. This is really bad. If he does these both right now, he's going to lose the game. Yep, just lost the game. And there's no reason to lose here. This is very poor. <sighs> His opponent knows how to use Mog Raider. He just won. It's really unfortunate to see, like, folks... Just, mm. Sorry, Golden Lynn, I'm not trying to, like, talk shit on you or anything like that, man, but this is just... This is really bad, dude. <laughs> you did not need to lose this. You just leave the circle protection up so that it, whatever he sacks them to... Yeah, that was really bad. Like, you did not need to lose that game. Oh, okay, well... um. That was interesting. Not the way I think it probably should have wrapped up. Let's see what these two are up to. More contamination locks and whatnot. Should probably also see what um what ML brought today. Actually, both these players. That last game was kind of disappointing. I, I think that the I, I think White Weenie is a far better deck, and I think you know due to some unfortunate plays there, um, we saw happen what happened. Uh, so he's on a red green, red green deck of some sort. Does not well. He's getting a primeval titan right now. It appears Booze is on some sort of four color blood deck. And he could be losing here to a Primeval Titan. Although, the backswing is sizable, and if he did not cast something this turn, he could have cast this this turn, I don't know. Wormcoil Engine? Okay, I guess he must have it in hand or something. Well, he's got a Kessig Wolf Run. Although a Timely Terminator or something like that, you know, could blow him out. An 18 life, too. To make near infinite mana. Hmm. Huh. Okay, there's just some beat down going on here. It looks like Michelle is just dead. He's trying to play a deck that I think preyed upon um, these sort of decks. Vendillion Click. Um, you're still not in good shape here. You're looking for what? Burn? Probably. Oh, like what? A Quake effect? But Quake's going to kill you too. Um, I don't even know what you're looking for here. Thrawn is a problem, obviously, for um, Blue Red Moon. Not good. Relic of Progenitus. Well, yeah, that's not a great card. I guess it's not bad against, um... Hmm. 
Well, not one card. A Bonfire of the Damned. Well, that was a lucky draw. And sometimes they draw it. You know, what can you do? That's going to wipe his entire board. Yep. I mean, that's kind of sloppy, but you run the card for that reason. I mean, sometimes it just wins you games out of nowhere. Um, can Michelle win this? No, I don't think so. I'm not, I don't think I am rooting for her right now. No offense to her. That island from him. Oh, uh, well, I don't, Thrun is tough to beat, man. <laughs> you know, I mean, Thrun is pretty tough to beat. I think you just, uh, jam with Thrun. I guess this gets around Snapcaster. Well, Snapcaster is a charm, still does the trick. But, I mean, it doesn't, like, win you the game. Yeah, Snapcaster on Is It Charm, blowing up the land, blocking the Thrun, staying alive. Still not looking good. So, Is It Charm, the land... Thrun has Hexproof, so you can't blow him out that way. Um, and you go down to one. Her her outs are, like, having a bolt in hand and drawing into True Name Nemesis. That's about it. That, like, keeps her alive. It's not even, like, per se true. Okay, well, no True Name Nemesis means the game's over, I think. Bolt Edict would work. All right, Nether Trader. All right, so some weird graveyard-based strategy. Okay, well, Garland uh, wins this one on some sort of rock deck. Hmm. What did he use Guttural Response on? Hard telling. Not is it, Charm? That's weird. I wonder why it's in the graveyard. He must have discarded it for some reason. All righty, so... That game is complete, and it looks like we're going to round two, guys. I think. Unless that was just game one right there, the first game we saw. It looks like it was. I'm going to go to a quick pause, guys, get some coffee, and we'll be back to watch round three of these two players. All right, guys, we're back. Um, Wasteland on High Market and attacking with a Mishra's Factory. Hmm, interesting. Well, is he out of land? I doubt that. Nope. Has his land dropped for the turn? Him to Turek. Oof. <laughs> well, this is probably a must counter if you have the counter spell. I assume she does. You counter this. I mean, one of those cards you think you really don't want to counter is still one for ones you, but it ties up their mana at least. If she has Blood Moon or something like that. It's pretty good. Negate. Okay. Blood Moon's... Oh, no land drop. Hmm. Not good for her. No counter spell for a Planeswalker? Alright, the game's over, probably. Um, she got a Bolt. But getting a two-for-one off a Planeswalker is pretty rugged. Um, the best card for her here is probably still TNN. May have it. Hmm. Well, Pithing Needle is a way to answer it, but he already got the two for one. He's got the two two, which is, you know, just a fair card. Um, yeah, if he goes fifth land, uncontested Planeswalker, like Nissa or something, the game is probably over there. He may just beat down. No, evidently he has something to cast. He's going to throw this thing out here to see if she bolts it. Oof. Ice Storm? Yuck. Well, she's off half of her colors. Got another Ice Storm. Yuck. That's pretty good. 
Could just go back to basics here. That'd be a beating. I mean, probably wouldn't per se winner of the game. He he probably runs more basics than we do too. If she just goes land go, like then he's gonna probably most assuredly blow up her Teleria West. Or if she plays a red blue land of some sort, he'll probably blow that up. Nothing. Okay. Well, getting royally mana screwed. I don't think you jam a five mana spell into this. Oh, Vendillion click. Oh, Repulse. Well, I'm going to draw her. Would have been worse to have the factory repulsed. He probably knew that was in the deck. I did not. Okay, just Genesis. I mean, Genesis is big enough. You have Days or Force of Will. If you're Force of Willing, Genesis is not a place you want to be. Like, you better have back to basics on the backswing. Genesis is, uh, yeah, not one you tend to like to to pitch counter. You could, she could uh, daze it, too. But if she dazes it, then, oof, yuck. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Pull from tomorrow, ditched. Um, I mean, I guess you have to, because she's so far behind. All right, Ruination. I think that's okay. Maybe not. Maybe it's going to build overwhelming advantage for her. Probably don't return that thing. Maybe eventually you do. Well, it looks like both players are going to play a non-game here. <laughs> yeah. All right, a tranquil thicket. I don't think he returned this quite yet. I mean, she's got counter magic 100%. I don't think you cast into it. I think you wait. But that's just me. I don't like casting into it. I think you expect that she has a three-mana counter. She hasn't been drawing lands. I guess she allows it to resolve, though. Well, killing this thing is not good for her, because that means that he's drawing extra cards. And now back to basics is kind of clunky. And he's got the 2-2, two -two, so... All right. <laughs> we played a game where uh, she ruinated the board, and uh, I forget what the hell it was I had. I had uh, some nonsense. Um, I had Jace or something on board. She blew up all my lands, and like I was able to just find more lands and just like win the game. <laughs> I forget what deck I was playing. I think it was Grixis. Um, well, you just definitely attack here. You definitely attack in. Draw an extra card. <laughs> Alrighty. This thing comes back. Needs to be dealt with again. What did she even get? The Dalkin Shackles? No. This thing. Oh! Ho, ho. Ugh! Yuck! <laughs> yuck! Yuck, yuck, yuck. That's the game, probably. Um, she can cast out the Coalition Relic, but... Um, or she got Drew Land, at least. Drew Land. He'll probably... He made his sack land, because, like, 3 and 3 is, is lethal. Yeah, he actually may do that. I wouldn't... Yeah, I actually wouldn't fault him for that. Um, I guess he could do 4. 
But is five any different for? I mean, she can't fetch. Um, I think he's probably advantaged here. I mean, he's got the card engine. He's got the planeswalker again. You can't take the two. You got to tap it, yeah. And then relic. Well, drawing cards. I could see possibly getting this back right now, yeah. No, his, his hand is obviously good enough then. Dried Arbor. Mm hmm. A wolf. A wolf. Okay. Well, now your mana does nothing. Well, I guess she has the Coalition Relic. But she has to cast that this turn. Yeah, it doesn't look good. Contamination could give us a run for our money. Um, well, I think we're a little faster than both these decks, though. I don't know. We'll see. We'd have some decently flexible cards, too. Although, I think in this matchup, um, we're very likely to want to bring in... Um, what's it called? Oh, I don't like that. I guess you sack the land now. I guess you get to draw a card at the end of turn. I think I would have rather sack the uh, Bitter Blossom, though. It's not a non-token creature, right? Yeah, it's any creature. So, I even like firing up the, um... I guess he's gonna toy with her a little bit. I think you just fire up the man land, to be honest. Um, yeah, put a charge counter on. I mean, if she just goes bribery, could she win the game on the spot? I don't know what he's playing in the deck. Sufficiently wide, though. If it's blue, tap blue. Bribery. Does he have something that just wins the game on the spot? If it's Emrakul, no, that doesn't win the game on the spot. Alright, it's red, so maybe a sweeper of some sort? You do, like, two to everything, and then force him to sack his Bitter Blossom token. But that puts you down to two, and his in Quagmire is then lethal. Okay, Anger of the Gods. Still on a bazillion cards. I think here, if you've drawn a land, you probably just bring back the uh, Murderous uh, Red Cap. No, I guess he has enough, enough business in his hand that he doesn't have to do that. Eventually, he'll grind her out of cards, too. So they're gonna have one mana of color next turn, or of non-black coloration. Hmm. A recurring a nightmare. Alright, that's game. That's concession worthy. The force of will is already gone. Yeah, you well, I guess you can kill this thing. Yeah, cycling miscalc to try to find what days? I guess these are still islands technically, so you can get it on the backswing. Days is about it, though. Um, unless she runs, like, Foil or Thwart, but, I mean, those are both very bad cards. I doubt she runs them. Um, not to mention, like, they wouldn't really be winning the game. Um, and then Braids Cabal, probably. Uh, I wouldn't leave that in play. I think you just sack it, get Braids Cabal back, force her to sack another permanent. Hmm. Yeah, that's why I don't play your cards like Ruination. I think there are certain matchups I guess you may want them in, but they don't really win the game. They just, they can't. Like, if you're already really well ahead. I mean, they're, get, they're, they're cards that get you further ahead. Um, that's about it, though. All right, cycles that. Um, and game? And concession? They're probably not ounce to this. So go sack, sack. 
probably just sack it here to contamination. Um, do the one. She could bolt it, but then no. Then the bitter blossom gives him the token that he needs to uh, to zap her one more time. So you just yeah. Choking a Sands. Alright, well, that's lethal. So, it looks like the Rock got there. The Rock combo. Her myriad non basic hate did not fare so well. Hmm. Michelle, I don't think you can beat this. <laughs> um, Force of Will is already gone. Force of Will is dead anyways. You're on one life. You need to have Thwart. That's about it. Or Foil. Like, return three islands to your hand. <laughs> Which is bad. Um, if you cast another spell and daze your own spell, you return the island to hand and prevent the damage, but then he will recur Nightmare you. So... <sighs> Yep, that's that's it. Alrighty, guys. Well, it looks like we're going to round two. I'm going to go ahead and pause it until it starts. Alright, guys, we're back. Uh, we're waiting for our opponent to show up, and we're going to watch uh, ML Berlin and Garland here for a second. Uh, Jungle Hollow to start it off. And a treetop. Cool. So it's red green versus rock. And a bunch of slow lands for both sides, it would appear. And a wasteland. I mean, that's fine, I think. That means he's doing nothing. Unless he casts a mana dork here, it's kind of not actually that great. Yeah, I don't like that play. Um, rather just cast something relevant. I guess he could randomly screw him. Oh, he screwed him. Okay, well, if he screwed him, he screwed him. Sometimes you get lucky like that. Sometimes you don't, though, too. Fatal push? All right, Signet. I could rationalize keeping a more land light hand. Um, no, I'm not playing against you, buddy. Well, having the answer to his artifact mana is not good for for Garland. All right, looks like our match is going to be started here soon. What is this guy doing? All right. Effectively block this guy. And concede match. No, thank you, man. I don't want to play you. I'm waiting for someone else. And unfortunately, my text is not working to say Littlefield. But hey, what are you going to do? Um, so let's go back to this game and check it out. Um, yeah, game's over. <laughs> um, hmm, she's a dust bowl. I mean, 
I guess it's fine. I, I think I would have just gotten, um, yeah, okay. Yeah, natural order is one of those things. Um, and just uh, end games out of nowhere. Okay, Goldman is attacking her on her turn, on his turn too. Interesting to me. I think there'd be more relevant things to cast in White Weenie, but I guess, what do I know? I think I tend to play out Mistress Factory generally turn three after I've dropped a relevant two drop. I don't know. I don't tend to like attacking on turn two with Mistress Factory. I cast my spells. Especially against Blue Red, where, I mean, it, he's going to have the pro red things. Those are going to be really good here, actually. If he can resolve them. Um, yeah, like uh, Silver Knight and um, and uh, Core Firewalker are actually pretty good. So is uh, the two enchantments that give protection from red or all damage done from sorceries and instances reduced to zero. Non-creature, non-combat sources reduced to zero. I think these are non-creature sources. I can't remember now how it's worded. Um, this is going to get countered, probably. It's a, it's a lightning rod if it does not get countered. If it doesn't get countered, she probably has a bolt for it. Or she's just lacking her red mana. All right, she dazes it. Which stinks for him. Um, not a great white weenie draw. I think white weenie can beat up on this deck. Although, we have to be leery of... All right, did our match finally start? All right, cool. Hey, man. This hand's not phenomenal, but we're on the play. And we're playing against Gabos here. You're going to burn my Mana Dork out? That's fine by me. I think what I like doing here is setting up a big green sun zenith. He wants to just burn out my uh, my mana dorks. I have plenty of mana, so I kind of want to tease that out of him. I mean, if it's like a searing blaze or something like that, it's not good, but... Okay, this thing. So what I'm doing here is I want to set up Kitchen Finks, um, because Kitchen Finks with Dromoka's Command is quite powerful, actually. Um, typically speaking, this is not the strongest of plays, but I wouldn't mind blocking here, so Kitchen Finks. But I think in conjunction with the cards I have, I'm bound to be the happiest with this. I could be wrong on that. Could just go Blood Moon and the game's over. Um, Okay, so it has first strike. Okay. You can goad me or you can exile one of my cards. All right, it'll attack. Cool. We'll blow this guy up. Okay.
Maelstrom Pulse is bound not to be bad either because uh, it can get rid of tokens. But we shall see. It's not going to counter the spell. Okay. You just get hit by a bigger thing. Okay, more land. All right, Searing Blaze, her. Interesting choice. I guess it's not that interesting. Okay, Mud Brawler Cohort. Okay. Hmm. This can kind of mess his combat math up, I think. Um, or he could just remove it and hit me for a bunch, but... Searing Blaze was kind of a pain in the butt. Alright, Goblin is General. Okay, we'll trade here. So four plus six, not quite lethal. Um Thing we need to do is pass the turn back to him. He's on one card. Sparks is not a bad draw.
take two down to five. Should have done that in response, actually, so a misplay on our part. Searing Blaze. Yuck. And that's game right there, unfortunately. Because of Menace, let's make sure he notices it first, though. Okay, Spike Shot Elder wins him the game here, unless he screws something up. Well, missing on lands and having some pain lands kind of stank there. And we misplayed one turn. I, uh, well, I don't know. It was close. It was close. So we'll go to boards here. Um, if we hit on lands, I think we win that. Um, but our board plan, I think, is pretty solid against this. So against this kind of plan, uh, we probably don't want Marchesa, actually. Probably do want this. Um, probably do want Zealous Persecution. Probably do want Golgari Charm. Um, Burton Forge Tender seems fine. Um, Shriek Moss seems okay. I don't think I like this as much. I don't think I like him as much. Um, what else seems kind of bad? Um, Title of Scholar seems kind of meh. Although it's a good low drop. Um, Chandra seems kind of meh too. Path to Exile seems like really bad. Um, I don't want to be giving him lands. Um, Dark Confidant, kind of the same. I think, other than Bitter Blossom, I think I'd rather just have the Containment Priest. I think we go with this. I think this is going to be good. Yeah, Marchessa against like an all-creature permanent red base deck seems kind of bad to me. So, let's see. Um, one misplay on the Swords of the Plowshares. Don't think it would have mattered there, though. Um, him having the Do Goblin Dark Dwellers um, was, was pretty crucial. Well, hitting land into it was pretty crucial. And we could not hit land. Um, unfortunately. We went enough, though, I think. I think we were pretty favored to hit one there. And if we hit Garrick um, a turn or two earlier, I think we just win that game, I think, outright. Um, this is a mole. This is a keep, but dubious. Bottom that. Strong draw there. Now we're just looking for green. If we can hit green, I think we can get out of this mess. Um, he's probably going to play out his threat here, yeah. And then we'll, we'll blow them out. Well, not a good draw on our part.
We're being a little greedy here. All right, no more haste creatures. And wipe your board. I'm gonna play this thing out, let him burst lightning it. He doesn't have to. I don't really need, yeah, here you go. Burst lightning, that's fine. That's kind of why we played it out. Um, something big. Okay. Well, opponent's draw has been live so far, but luckily we have some good action against his live draw. Well, obviously the Bayloth looks pretty good, as long as we don't get, like, Price of Progress or something here. Goblin King. And have Mountain Walk, so... Could have gone for Finks. I uh, did not. Wanted the Courser to start getting some card advantage. Okay. That's a trade I can get behind. Obviously, his stuff will have Mountain Walk, but I have to go for the throat. Well, are you done already? That should be a concession, I think. All right. So, anything else? Probably not. Although I probably do want to put, what's it called, um, Dark Blast in this deck. I think it'd be very good. I'm going to keep this dubiously. Um, this is not a great keep. If I hit land, it's very good. Okay. I'm actually not going to run out the Death Rite Shaman. I'm going to hit his hand. Disorder. Interesting.
Maybe get a concession here, I don't know. Or he's going to try to burn this thing out. Okay. Well, you got Lily. Well, he's raw moon. Tuck Tuck Scrapper. Hmm. Well, don't drop moon on me. Don't drop a moon. Although if he does, is it really? Is it really that bad for me? Well, what's going on for five mana? Oh, a Kiki Ajiki. Mm. Discard a card, my friend. Yeah, I figure you probably don't block the Rhino. Okay. Now that card is huge, but I think that's lethal.
All right, well, that's game. Yeah, that's a six. It's a lot better when you have your little cards, but Searing Blood getting out of the deck was also imperative. Those two Bayloths. Yeah, Bayloth is a, is a board card for a reason in this deck. Um, really twofold. It's it's slightly flexible. I play it against the Liliana decks too. Um, so one to match two one. Cool. And let's check out what else is going on here. All right, Michelle is playing Golden Wind. I guess I shouldn't complain that much. I don't mind my matchup against Red Deck Wins. Yeah, I guess it wasn't Red Deck, it was Gabos. Pretty similar. Um, at one point in time, it was so prolific in 100-card Singleton that people sideboarded, um, what is it, Knights of Thorn? <laughs> at one point in time, people did, though. A long time ago when it was legal on Moto. There was really two versions of uh, Red Deck Wins back then. Or not legal, but back when it had a filter. Um, you had a... This will be a cypher run. Oh my goodness, yes it will be. Yes, indeed it will be. There's a worm coil. Wow. There's a worm coil coming back. Oh, I need to wait a week. I should check it out, man. I'd rather play something different. That's why I put this in my face. It's not anything against my opponents. Um, Thalia... Wait a second. What? She has Thalia in her deck? Wait a second. Did he accidentally? Did she like remove one of her things in response? I don't even know what's going on here. Well, yeah, of course she did. White Winnie's in the in the in the queues every week. That's why I stopped playing the deck. <laughs> Red is the new black. <laughs> Well, the cool thing is this. I don't think we can possibly play a red deck in the final rounds. I don't know who is winning, but... All right, so you have Athelia and a bunch of nonsense. The shadow thing can, I don't know, keep on beating her up. Has protection from red, has protection from half her deck. There may be credence to taking that.
What's going on over here? All right, Gideon of the Trials. Well, there is a... I think you actually take the Satari Priest now. I mean, she could have an answer to Gideon. Gideon, you just burn him out. Um, I think you take the thing that... You can't block. You're at nine. Oh, she's on an Ancestral Visions. Coming off next turn. Well, you can just... Blow up Gideon. I don't know what Oakish means. Is this a Ashundra? Well, what are we going to have here? Um, something huge. The Trail of Ark. Could Ark Trail... No, I can't do that. Oh, Inferno, a Titan. <laughs> That's probably pretty good. Um, it's going to blow up the Knight of the Meadow Grain. And uh, do one to Gideon and allow Thalia to attack it. She can't, or he can't cast anything else. Even if he has Swords of Plowshares, it's not getting cast here. Because the Thalia, his own Thalia, which has been stolen, um, is now blanking it. Um, and actually, I think... So he has to blank the Inferno Titan. You don't need to attack with that, really. Um, you just leave it back. Because it can still actually block things and stuff. She attacks him. What's well, interesting to me. Um, can't gain life that way. Babies ain't made that way. <laughs> I think I would have gone for the uh, Gideon of the Trials. Um, just me. And then prevent the damage to this, and then attack at the next turn. Oh, that's not the right play. You're not going to outrace this. Like, Inferno Titan is, like, next to, like, Emrakul, like, one of the most impossible cards to race. Although he has a blocker there. Okay. Well, a Johnny is, uh... It's no joke. Although he did this all wrong, um... Michelle does need to probably give up the um, the Thalia, though. And take the Sultari Priest. She could definitely lose here. I mean, these have been very good draws on his part, but she could definitely still lose. I think you still give up... Yeah, okay, there you go. Give up the Thalia. Pay your, pay your measly one. Should have taken the Sotari Priest before. It's unblockable, and now it's huge. So, you gotta pay one, yep. White Weenie can be no joke. When it hits, it hits. All right. Hour of Devastation. Well, that's a hell of a draw. <laughs> that's obliteration in its finest. I mean, I'd laugh if he, like, drew a sword. Equip sword, kill. Equip sword, kill works. Well, that card's actually pretty good against us, too. Our Devastation is not a bad one. Um, you just get in there, blow up the spirit. Well, 
That's lethal next turn. You have a land to steal also the um the silly Sultari. Cause oddly enough, I mean if he does draw like specifically sort of fire and ice. Hilarious if he does. He takes the coil. What's well, not gonna be relevant because she'll steal with the shackles. Take three. He's gonna blow this thing. Or actually, no, she's just he's just dead, right? Yeah, this is nine. We'll see. Maybe I will. I'll try. Despite some of my misplays today, we will try. This deck is certainly very good, the one we're playing. The one Michelle's playing actually could have given us issues. I mean, Infernal Titan goes over the top of all of our stuff. Our devastation is devastating, obviously, against uh, Planeswalkers. Here's a win. Um, so pump, pump, pump. I mean, you don't really need to do this. The slow rollage. The slow rollage is clutch. Well, is this going to game three or is this a game two? Good games. Okay, well, it looks like it's it. Alrighty, well. Alright, guys, quick pause and then uh, we'll be here for finals, I guess. Alright, guys, we're live. Uh, this hand is um, close. We're going to keep this. We're going to keep this on the play. Um, it could be wrong, though. What it really needs is black mana to go right, um, and it may miss. But it can cast most of its non-black spells with just this mana base. All right, cool. And it's got a lot of removal. Well, there's the black mana. Slower hand, though. Another four drop, not quite what we're looking for. He could just um, pass it back again and try to crack a Crozen Verge. Although, if he does that, he has to know he's running the risk of uh, getting mind censored here. Now, the worst first is probably like a Kitchen Thinks. Okay, well, that's actually like one of the better drops he could have had here. Uh, because we know it's coming into play tapped. It's fine. I'm going to wait till end step, just in case he's, like, holding a mana dork. And I think I am going to use the... No. I'm actually going to use the go for the throat, I think. I don't know. It's tight. Uh, because I want to be able to cast spells um, pretty timely. Um, so we get bad ones here. Terminate does deal with worm coil engine and nuisances such as that. We're going to do this. We obviously have to take two damage now. Well, Planeswalker number one. Hmm. And then we go into... Pretty big attack on the following turn. Could be Finks. No, just this thing. This thing's fine. Okay, so he's going to make a big undergrowth champion. So, we may just here kill this thing. And yeah, that's seeming more likely now. Um, so, black, green, kill you.
Well, that's good to see because, I mean, this doesn't prevent destruction, does it? He could have a protection spell. But I don't think that's okay. I'm fine with that. Seed Sap Forest is A-OK. -okay. We'll, uh, we'll be a troll here and just play on our, our spells, main one, like we do. Um, it's very close on whether we activate a Raging Ravine next turn or just cast out the Rhino. The Rhinoceros is very good. Um, we're trying to go wide here, though. I, we'll see. We shall see. I tend to think this card is not good enough. Um, you have to control a green permanent. It's basically taking up two lands. I'm not a fan. I'm not a huge fan of it. Sorry about that, ML. I didn't mean not to wish you uh, good luck and fun in the match. Hmm. Well, let's get in there. Let's get him for seven. He probably should have waited to fetch just to make me play around uh, Path to Exile or Swords of Plowshares. I mean, I know he's on red-green at this point. That's a big chunk of life. Um, do we just kill next turn? So we have five, five, four. Yeah, I mean, we do if he doesn't, you know, do anything. Yeah, I mean, if he just pops the birds, he has to cast something to block right now. That's not going to be good enough. That's a little slow. He could have, like, um, okay, if he's just attacking my thing, he played a land already. Yeah, I'll take it. My Kithian can take it. Could he have, there's nothing he can have. Yeah, he takes the damage. I don't really care about Gideon going down to one, because the game is over this next turn. Well, that's a good draw, but uh, again, it's, um... I think it's irrelevant here. Then we just fire up everything and uh, all guns towards enemy, our opponent. All right. And that's lethal. Okay. Game. Well, it's game one. Not much fanfare. Um, let's begin sideboarding. Um, I think Deathmark is going to be good. Hmm. I also kind of like this for, like, the Mana Dorks. Duress is also interesting to me because it gets, like, the Birthing Pod and the Natural Order. Those are, like, two cards that I can just, like, probably never beat. Um, Chandra is kind of meh. Damage base removal. I kind of like Reclamation Sage, too. For the same reasons. Um, even Mind Sensor is probably good. Um, hmm. <laughs> I think this sword can get out. Lingering Souls may not be necessary. I mean, it is a very good card. I think I like the Aristocrat. Well, the Flyers are going to be bound to be pretty decent, right? Let's try it. I mean, the, the Flyers are pretty decent, but I think we can do without it. Dwarven Miner is also kind of interesting. Um, Yeah, I think I put Dwarven Miner in as well. So it's going to randomly like blow him out if we have it. It is kind of slow, though. We're not going to be on the draw this time. Or on the play, rather. We're back on the draw, which is certainly worse. But he thinks... Pinks is still pretty good. I think I want Dark Confidant too. Um, 
Hmm. I don't even know, guys. Yeah, maybe we don't need minor. Let's try this. Let's try this out. Containment Priest is actually very interesting, too. Actually, I probably should have brought that in. Actually, is there still time? There is. Let's resubmit. Um, I like Containment Priest better than I like Bitter Blossom, actually, in this matchup. Um, for the reasons specified. All right, submitted. Cool. Um, because the way we lose is, like, Natural Order or Birthing Pod, and it's such a blowout if he, like, plays a Birthing Pod and we're able to get it with that thing. Just a huge blowout. Um, hand's good. Hand is not bad. Okay, tap land. Well, Path to Exile, not great. I don't really like it this early in the game. It's a good late game play. A Johnny, I think, is going to be good. All right, gain some life. Slow lands again. Hmm. Hmm. I'm actually just going to attack here. I can't see myself wanting to remove two things, and Bolt or Go for the Throat should do it. Okay, Yavamaya Hollow is kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, well, it's just going to get a land, um, which is not great for us, but it's not horrendous either. I think here we just bolt this thing, get, I don't know, probably a red-black land here. Probably the bad ones, and we'll just go for a bolt. And we may just tap the... Um, Probably just going to tap down the Yabamaya Hollow, because we have a lot of removal in hand. Um, so red, white. Um, hmm. Yeah, it feels pretty good. I mean, set him back a turn. And also, leave his stuff vulnerable. Yeah. And I feel pretty good. I just don't want to get natural order out of the game um, at this point. Or birthing pod, but I mean... Johnny can deal with Birding Pot after the first activation. He's going to have to take damage to cast it here. Got Live Shaman. Well, next turn, if I don't get, like, Blood Moon or something obnoxious, I'm probably just going for Siege Rhino. Well, start the beats. All 
All right, tireless tracker. So he's gonna get some cards, but it's slow. Not a fetch land, at least. Um, so we can blow this thing up. We would just do this. And if he has the Primeval Titan, we can actually. Well, he can't, can he? He has to have two lands, like an Ancient Tomb, but like that would put him close to dead. Unfortunately, I don't have Scrublin. I could have left both Death Rite activation up and. Um, And Path to Exile. All right, he's got more lands. Okay, Thrag a Tusk. I'm actually going to wait to Path to Exile that because I'd like to trample over for more damage. Well, it's now or never time. Because Ajani is on seven. All right, Lotus Cobra. Okay, Crosan Verge, making a mana. You can still fire up the uh, Raging uh, Ravine. Although, if he goes to zero lands here, he has to deal with this Johnny. Is, is it at the end of the day? Okay, Garuk. Making, I would assume, a beast.
And go ahead. Well, you're the landless. Can double block the rhinoceros. Take the Green Sun Zenith. And tell him to go. Okay, Beast. We already know the card in his hand. I don't need to thought seize here, so I won't. Um, I think you probably just concede here. I guess you could just remise lands. Um, tap land, though. All right. I will attack with both or all of my cards this turn. Um, he probably is going to block... And here's the rationale behind it. Um, Garouk Primal Hunter, Garouk Primal Hunter, and Garouk Primal Hunter. The rationale behind it is this. He'll likely block the Tide Hollow Skeller and get back his Green Sun Zenith to try to find Dryad Arbor. I mean, you can trade me, yeah. And let's get rid of the Green Sun Zenith right now. Okay. 
Let me draw a card. Okay. gonna jam well I like the prospects of that let's drain it for two deal five two more yep I'll take six well not the best draw in the world um, I think we utilize this color Alrighty, nothing. Yeah, and that puts him to dead to an activation of death right, activation of death right. Well, having an ultimate in a Johnny like in a very, very long time. I think that's game, though. I don't know why he attacked there. I think he wanted to hang back and hope to hit another land to crack his myriad landscape. The damage is irrelevant here. Um, even if you have a blocker, you have to gain life. Like Kitchen Finks or Bust is pretty much it. Um, we haven't drawn as well. Um, Thought Seed wasn't bad. It allowed us to get rid of the Garouk. Okay. I'm not going to miss lethal here, so if you don't have a way to gain life, well, then that's gain. Well, Noble Hierarch is, is mildly interesting. Um, and it looks like Four Color Blood takes this down. Cool. Well, do you have, like, Feed the Clan? No? Okay. Well, good game. As always, ML. Good game, man. All right, well, it looks like um, we won the tournament with Four Color Blood. Surprise, surprise, guys. Hate to rub it in anyone's face, but uh, this deck's bunkers. It's very, very good. And let's see if there's any other games going on, guys. Um... Yep, looks like Michelle and Booze are going at it. Okay, it looks like Booze is probably winning. Two cards and two cards, but another Reliquary on a 7-7 in play with Drain Capability from Deathrite Shaman on his turn but prior to attacks. Yeah, seems like game. Repulse could be a thing. Or Repeal, but Repeal is already in the graveyard. Um, could Snapcaster Mage it, but then the Death Rite Shaman will exile it in response. All right, Booze wins. And quick pause, guys, before uh, they start up their life. All right, guys, we're live again. Evolving Wilds, turn one. Not a card you tend to see that often. In two-color decks, fixing does get a little uh, crazy, though. I tend not to like the card. There's enough fetch lands that you don't need to run it. Um, but teach their own. Two color again is kind of tricky though. Especially two color uh, moon. I assume it's a blood moon deck. Assume it is a uh, UR moon or uh, blue red moon rather. Um, one drop mana accelerant. Go. If she gets red here, it's very likely that she has a way to kill this thing, which is bad for him. Um, when they have answers, these cards are so much worse. They don't have an answer to it. All right, she got red. I think she probably has like. Magma Spray or something like that. Maybe Lightning Bolt. You always bolt the birds, I think. I tend to. Um, depends if she has Counter Magic, too. She could have Counter Spell and, like, want to counter the three drop that he plays. Like a Remand. Um, is it Charm? Is it Charm blowing up Elves? I don't like the draw, too. All right, just Fire. Okay. 
not as good, but like you don't really want to wait and see if they play another mana dork. It's kind of one of those dicey ones. All right, well that one you cannot remove unless you have an edict effect. Um, I have a feeling his deck goes bigger than hers does. High market's a weird one to me. She must have like a lot of control magic effects or something like that. All right, trophy mage getting Vidalcan shackles. Although it's not very good right here. Um, Ensnaring Bridge, another target. Vidalcan Shackles, yeah. I don't think she runs Ensnaring Bridge. Her deck is not likely to go Hellbent very often. Um, takes the damage, plays a Planeswalker, a Johnny is what I'm guessing. Taps the blue. Nope. Um, choke. Well, that's horrendous. Do you have an answer to that thing? You... Yeah. Yep. That's a game. Probably. Um, well, Shackles can steal absolutely zero right now. I guess you might as well attack, but he's going to block. I mean, it has Hexproof, and, you know, I don't know what you're going to do against it. Choke is a good game, though. That's a card I run on my board, and, um, yeah, I like guess it's just damn near impossible to beat. Um, drawing a bunch of cards. Cool. I mean, he could just randomly die to his own Dark Tulage. That could be a thing. Um, I doubt it will be, but it could be. Dust Bowl ain't bad. All right, cycling. Looking for what? Another island? All right. Well, the damage is going to be relevant here because it's not a dark two woods draw. Enchantments are intrinsically extremely hard. Living Wish? Okay. Well, that's actually not bad for her because if he casts it. Um, he probably has Kasali or Pride Mage main deck. He could have um, the Reclamation Sage in the sideboard still. She can do a point now where she can actually dust both the living shit out of him. And um, all right, well the the shackles are gone, so but she can start dust bowling the living hell out of him and um, and possibly win that way. And actually, the islands that are permanently tapped are not bad for that. So Reclamation Sage gets. The, the Vidalcan Shackles. Um, I think you get the green-based land. Oh, oh, it's tough. Maybe the green-black land is the right one to get. It's either green-black or the white-red. But the cool thing about Dust Bowl with Dark Tutelage is you already have your win con set up as long as you can strand him on mana. Um, but you have to strand him on mana. And you have to hope that he hits very poorly on Dark Tutelage. Um, See, so oi. Treasure Mage getting what? I don't like this play. Why would you tap the island of all things? Because, huh? Well, she can stay alive for a while. She'll he'll probably block here. Yeah, makes sense. Planeswalker. All right, him to Turek is not good for her. That's kind of why I was a proponent of hitting the Black Land, but I think that was my first my first instinct. All right, um, Cryptic Command would have been really nice to knock the um, choke out. Um, all right, this thing's mono huge. She can stay alive for a while though. Obviously, you don't want to blow up lands now. Yeah, blowing up the land was probably a lot better there. Um, attacking? Oh, she has burn. He's not gonna. He's gonna block. She's got burn, dude. Just let it go through. I guess you had nine. Shriek Maw. Yikes. Can't even cast that thing. Well, you can, but you'll blow up your own Karyatid. I mean, he could die to his own tutelage. This would be pretty epic. I mean, the tutelage is kind of missing for him, though. It's over. I don't know, man. That's a lifelinker right there. Do you have a way to kill it? Is it over? I don't think you were, you're bound to win this one. That's a big thing right there, too. Well, if you have burn for the Liliana, do you have Hour of Devastation land? Nothing. Okay. Deathrite Shaman. 
back up to five. Death right in response. That's seven damage. Obviously, she can attack with the land next turn if she likes. Do you have a three damage burn spell? This is where you regret throwing the lightning bolt at the um, at the knight, I think. Hmm. Wonder why not main one. You should not counter this, I don't think. If you have Hour of Devastation, which is what I think you have in hand, you should blow up the Mana Crits. It'll take eight, and you have two draw steps. Um, you obviously need to get an Island with the Bloodstained Mire. Going down to 12, take eight down to four, but get rid of the Lifelink. You have to hope that he draws, like, I don't know what. He probably doesn't run a ton of fives. So, if you have the burn, I think you use the burn here. Um, he'll probably play the death right out, which is good for you. He's going to counter this, okay. I don't think she had to tap that other island, though. So, I think she's down one land that she didn't need to be. Is it charm? Negate, okay. Death right? She's hoping to mize a land here. Deathrite will make it, though. Oh, no. She missed. All right, that's game. Probably. Did she? Well, are you dead? Six, eight, two, if he wants, but I think he'll want to heal himself. I think she does have, um, I think that's what she has. Hour and land. Yeah, that's my best guess. That's why she debated really hard, but evidently she drew the land that she needed, but that's, that's a beating. That's really horrible, because she probably could have won this. Do you have the land? That's too bad if you die that way, but... um. Let's see. The Goyf is too big, um, and it's lethal next turn. So, what does it take here? Chase the Mind Sculptor doesn't even do it. Yeah, I mean, I guess you blow up the board and hope he hits a 7-drop. <laughs> Chances of that are very low. Very, very low. I'm always curious to see. Not to be too demanding, sorry. I probably... I am curious to see what she had. Because I think she did have 6 through that. I think she had a very good ability to win. She'd blown up the D-Shaman and this thing and this thing. Um, going to force the action. Alright, you have like an ice... Oh, he has the answer anyway. All right. I could have drawn it that turn, though. Who knows? Who knows how long he's had it? Choke and boiler things against this deck, though. And, I mean, honestly, probably if, if there were more. All right, let's see the hand. Oh, Wormcoil Engine? 
No, your hand's not that good, dude. Your hand wasn't winning that game. All right, guys. Well, I think that's it for the day. Um, we ended up taking first with uh, Four Color Blood. Um, obviously, a very, very powerful deck. Um, congrats to ML for, uh, for second. And I think, let's see how this shaped up. Let's see how everyone came out. Um, don't know if it's entered yet. I think it'll be ourselves, ML. I don't know where Garland will end up placing. Booze will be relatively high, I think. Not, probably not second, though. It'll probably be like third. Um, but yeah, interesting series of games. Let's see if it'll it'll register here. Well, no, it looks like it's not going to. I'm not going to sit here and bore you guys with that. Um, pretty good deck. Um, you know, uh, it's a deck that I kind of rail against um, because I think it's... Uh, Um, I think, um, it's a deck that is, is very good. It's a natural strategy in the format, and I think it's probably one of the best. I think our ban list allows it to be one of the best, not because the cards that are allowed in it, the cards are all fair in this deck. They just work very well together, and they're just, you know, good two-for-one advantage cards, very efficient, and they can be aggressive or, to some extent, controlling. Um, I think in order to make this, you know, not per se one of the better strategies around, um, we need to unban some more stuff, um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't put a plug in for it here and tell you that I, you know, I, I'm kind of jamming this deck today. Um, although I've jammed it many times, mostly because like I, I just I want to see the format grow, and I think you know if we were to put a lot of the blue and the black base cards that enable combo and control to a larger extent, decks like this would be uh, more evenly paired against those uh, those strategies. Um, so that's just kind of my thinking on it, um, you know, and. Here the deck is, Four Color Blood. Um, Zealous Persecution, new one on the board, actually did well today. Didn't get a chance to play Rest in Peace, um, no reanimator strategies. Um, it was between Rest in Peace or Disenchant. I think Disenchant would have been a good option as well for this deck. To get around Blood Moon effects and like Back to Basics um, or um, a, a Gemstone Hall or whatever that card is. The, the two green one that makes all the lands produce the same color. Um, Containment Priest did get in, um, but mostly just to stop um, Birthing Pod shenanigans uh, as well as uh, Natural Order shenanigans. Um, but otherwise, you know, it, it, it fared pretty well. Um, we had two Red Deck wins matchups where we got to see Fork Bolt, Obstinate Bailoth, um, Burton Forge Tender. I believe we brought in Zealous Persecution and did some work against Goblins, um, as well as Reclamation Sage in. Um, didn't get to play Choke or Boil today because we didn't really see the control matchup. I think Michelle thinks that the deck she was running was actually really good against Four Color Blood. I think it is slightly predatory towards it, but I think what you give up in order to beat this deck um, with main deck cards like Blood Moon and like, you know, Back to Basics and Ruination and Board is the fact that you're going to be worse against aggro, um, generally speaking. Now you have cards like Sudden Demise, Earthquake style effects to get like weenie aggro, but Burn aggro is going to generally be tough because their mana curve is going to be a lot lower than yours is, um, and, and they can tend to get you, especially if they're like mono red. Um, I mean, yeah, you probably commit board space to like cards like chill but chill is not so hot um, especially when you're running a lot of burn cards um, and if they ever get through it or they ever manage to or if they just you know counter it um, with the, their their red or pyroblast um, then uh, then you're you're up shit's creek as they say where i'm from um so again here's the deck a uh, very strong deck uh, if you are looking to play in the 100 card event um i'd recommend this deck very much um i think it's a very powerful deck um um Alrighty, guys. Um, well, we're going to call it here. Um, again, get the blue cards and the black cards back in there, people. If you're voting, if you are voting for your cards, um, or if you're voting for cards, um, which ML is going to have up relatively soon, um, open the format up, because I don't want to just jam this every time. I think this is the best deck. Um, 
by by a pretty pretty long shot. I mean, we mold the five and beat Red Deck wins. You know, um, that's kind of silly. Anyway, um, I hope you guys um, hope you guys enjoyed the video series. Sorry for losing the first two uh, round or the first two games in our first match against Red Deck wins. Um, hit, forgot to hit record. So enjoy the videos and uh, take care. I guess I'll, I'll see you guys next week. Bye bye.